welcome back to another trek through the dungeon. <clears throat> Alrighty, so uh, let's see, where were we? Oh yes, where last we left off, we were doing a over-explained slash tutorial uh, Minotaur Berserker run, and it looks like it's going pretty well so far. Uh, let me actually pop open Twitch on the side here real quick, make sure the stream actually is streaming. Oh, so far it's just ads, but we'll uh, we'll get past that shortly. Anyway, um, what I had been doing thus far uh was building towards this end game of axe shield, and uh, uh just being a berserker. That's all you really need, really. Armor dodge, right? The biggest armor you can wear, and then go from there. Oh, looks like some people have joined chat. Hello, everybody. Um, if there's anything wrong with audio levels, please let me know. And as this is a tutorial run, certainly feel free to pipe up with questions that I can answer as things go. I'll try and keep an eye on the chat uh, throughout the video. Okay, audio levels are good. Perfect. Um, things to consider at this stage. We are trying now to reach the lair. That is the next big step. Lair can absolutely occur anywhere from 9 to 12, or 8 to 11. So we're already very much should have found it by now. I'll bet you with all this water and eels, we'll find it. I realized that I spent a lot of time last video focusing on tactics. Oh, hello there, Limo. It's good to meet you. Uh, I'm uh, focusing on tactics, but talking about... Ooh. Well, thank God that was a... Please tell me it didn't crash. Oh, okay. Talking about tactics, but also discussing strategic things. Um, n game knowledge, specifics of different encounters, monsters, etc. And, you know, I realize the challenge there. Some of that you just have to play and develop a habit for and learn yourself. Uh, sometimes you have to pause every time you see a monster and look it up because, you know, I can't possibly explain every monster, all of its talents and situations. Hell, I don't know them myself. But, you know, that's what consumables are for, to smooth over that curve. But if I could sum up all the lessons from last video, which I hope you all gathered in one, it's hug the walls, hug the stairs, search in concentric circles around your stairs, so focus on your escape routes, right? When encountering an enemy, back off and make it chase you so that you can fight it close to your safety. Recover in the known, don't retreat into the unknown. These are good basic tactics. Try to make 1v1 fights as often as possible uh, and know the worth of your consumables. Those would be the basic general tactics I would I would say that I'm trying to get across. We have found a reasonable spattering of resistances, nothing massive, and that's okay. So let's get back to it. Uh, following my own advice, and ooh, I'm gonna carry this for a very specific reason. See how it has resist corrosion, and I have no source of resist corrosion. Uh, wielding a dagger is basically the equivalent of choosing not to be armed for me, considering my training is all in non-daggers and strength instead of dex. But having the ability to quickly be resistant to corrosion while fleeing a corrosion situation makes a lot of sense to me. Let's check the last staircase. Triple dipping. Uh, yeah, we win this fight. Let's, let's Trog's hand just in case we get paralyzed or something. Didn't matter. I could search this way to the east, but I would rather stay within near of my stairs. Uh, question, is there any difference between a fighter plus trog and a berserker? Excellent question. Um, the only thing that I would say is starting background also determines your strength, intelligence, and dexterity split to a degree. So my guess would be that a troglodyte might have a little more going for strength and a little less for int than a fighter but i don't know uh and functionally the bigger difference is you don't start the game with it if you start the game as a fighter you're probably not worshiping a deity until floor four or past right so if your goal hmm, i think we pull one at a time uh, we pull two we'll, we'll pull two we can we can we can win against two if your goal is to worship a non-trog fighting deity then start as a fighter but if your intention is to become a trog worshiper in the end, then why would you start as a fighter? Just start as a, a berserker. You get it for free, and that's four floors of EXP you've gained. Okay, here we go. So here we're looking at a vampire. 
Now, again, I'm going to try and avoid doing that thing where I explain every single enemy, but vampires, just the, the short of it is, vampires can deal a lot of damage, and they can heal off of the damage in Giyu. So we're going to take them seriously. So round the corner, he has to come right here to hurt me, and he won't be invisible when he does. I'm going to pre-berserk and win. Pre-berserk and win. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Again, we are playing with we're playing with a cheat code character, Minotaur, and acting like we're playing with the weakest race in the game. But you watch, the, the result of that is going to be that we're going to win this run unless we, you know, stop doing that at some point and and nothing's going to get in our way. We can use a generic axe and have a lot of power. Okay, see the value of staying close to the stairs. Look how far away I came. I have to deal with these guys 3v1. I don't have a choice. This is where our axe is going to come in, in handy. Our axe will allow us to strike all of them at once. If this was a situation where you could not deal with them 3v1, what you could do is use your fear scroll to make them run away, or one of your many poison scrolls that would fill the screen with poison. The yaks will not aggress on you through poison, he will, because he's poison resistant. He'll come into melee, you beat him up, and then you deal with the yaks later. So, long term tactics. The thing is, we are handily able to win this fight. We're still going to hug the wall because we want them to do this come into a conga line, break off, instead of the middle where they would just follow as a pack. Turn the corner, break line of sight, break line of sight. And holy cow, we made it all the way back to the stairs. Uh, we can still win, so we're gonna try and win this fight. Let's let's fight the Wraith alone. And one yak at a time, please. Couple, why not? I am, again, being extremely overcautious. There's nothing stopping me from just berserking and winning that fight. But, you know... The whole point of this one is to be overcautious, so working as intended. This guy is a summoner, and the things he summons can range from minor demons to extremely dangerous demons. I continually will fight him until I feel endangered by his summons, at which point I will back off, because killing him kills the summons instantly. That did not used to be the case. Uh, why don't you come at me, bro? That's a dangerous summon, but I'm hoping I can pull him upstairs. Yep. Yes. So, oh, that's a rust demon. That's not good. So, um, that's why you may have noticed I was like alternating between these two stairs. The enemies downstairs are going to get a free hit when you come down. So checking what's beneath you and deciding it's safe or not makes a lot of sense. You can get a lot done, you know, hugging one staircase. Don't get me wrong. Especially when you're boasting 16 freaking armor this early in the game. Relative to, a, you know, a magician where they don't have that luxury. Concentric circles near the stairs. Concentric circles near the stairs. Now there is no safe exploration. Everything is far away. We're going to go here because it looks the most like a dead end. And there were yaks, so I'm hoping that there's a lair entrance here. There is not. Uh, pack. Let's back all the way away from here. Pearl a javelin or two, just to soften them up. I say soften them up and they die. Go figure. You guys are really, really making it hard for me to make a good tutorial here because you keep dying before I can demonstrate why my tactic makes sense. Beat you up around the corner, beat you up around the corner. See, right there, I was following my gut instinct of just leveraging how powerful my character is by diving them. And I could, I could. I could fight all four of them at once, berserk, and win. But why do that when I could do this? Take them one at a time with all the time in the world if things go wrong and all the advantages in the world to, to win with. Uh, that boulder beetle is dangerous at all times. Very good target for poisoning. Uh, we're going to pre-zerk against him. Just because I really do think that he's going to take yep, the damage. And again, as a non-mage, you have a lot more leeway here. As a mage, these guys will hurt you badly. 
See, that's what happens just going toe to toe and fighting him. Oh, and he's not even dead. He just jumped. Back off. Alright, got him. Orc priests. Dangerous at any speed. Orc priests can smite you for a, what, 20 damage, give or take? 17 damage? And they can do it every turn. So if you just walk towards him right now, you could go 17, 34, 40, uh, 51, and 68. So that never happens. He usually barely remembers to smite you twice, but yeah. Great question, Lati Bar Bear. Uh, so the way piety works with Trog, your piety causes your power directly, and vice versa. So there's no reason for you to train invocations as a troglodyte. Evocations, on the other hand, can empower your wands, and it's very, very much a good thing to do. But I have found in my experience that you don't need to. You will do just fine without it. So I tend to wait until, you know, all of my other core abilities are where I want them before I before I start training it. And I'll put like five points into it and then stop. Honestly, look at my stack of wands. I've barely touched these things. And this is in an over-explained run where I'm trying to use them, where I'm trying to use every edge. In a generic run, the joke I say is, I'm a magician. This magi Minotaur is a magician. He uses a wand axe, and it casts a death in a circle at melee range. <laughs> there you go, Greenborn. That's a spirit. Uh, training it to 5 or 10 can help a lot with the big evocables, like Condenser Vein and such. But in a 3 rune run, I mean, when will I use that when I could just whack it? No, wands are legit. Uh, wands are legit. They're not considered magical for the purposes of Trog. Spellbooks are pretty much... A a and the thing that, yeah. Spellbooks and spells are pretty much the only thing he cares about. Okay, options. We could attack with our ranged weaponry here, right? Uh, our boomerangs, our javelins, maybe an ice blast wand and kill him. But we are so far away from our safety. Why bother? Break line of sight. Break line of sight. Break line of sight. Make sure he's still following us, because I think we've lost him, actually. Oh, God. We're going to have to babysit him. Now we're within, like, a screen of our safety. So now this is a good place to get 1v1s. He came from the other corner, so break line of sight. I do not want him casting monsters on me. I want him walking right up to me. Break line of sight. Come up to me. All right. Well, we don't know where he went now, so now I have to go hunting for him. Oh, there he is. He, at this range, I could easily charge him down. But why bother? Let's just do this. Break line of sight. Come all the way to me. One, two steps. So in a... Oh, those are dangerous summons that can mutate me, so I'm berserking to end this fight immediately. and hiding somewhere else to recover from my berserk. Okay, weapon skill first or fighting? Uh, in a real run, weapon, then fighting. Because weapon increases your damage and your attack speed. And uh, fighting increases your health p pool, which is, you know, valuable, but it, it the degree of contribution to your damage is a lot less. However, as a minotaur who has plus two to fighting, plus two to every martial weapon, plus two to armor, it doesn't matter. I train all of them simultaneously and just don't give a damn. <laughs> the, the most I'll do is focus train my axes here, as you can see I've done, right? Uh, and then that's about it. Um, I'm going to get this axis to roughly 18 this game because I'm going to stay one-handed all game. Um, what if an enemy has something to prevent you coming closer to the exit? Um, good question. Uh, good question, Limo. Basically, it's a it's dependent. You have to do the math. Am I going to take more damage walking away? Am I going to take more damage standing my ground? Uh, once when we were being beset on by two fast enemies, I forget which they were, 
but that could paralyze and poison. I didn't retreat because in the time I retreated, they would have get four free attacks on me or getting netted, for example. But charging them down was hardly a problem. Uh, great axes later in the game. Eh, probably going to go to broad axe and stay there, to be honest. We talked about this a little last run. Battle axe and executioner axe are a lot of fun, but the actual benefit of being of blocking for 14 is so high that it's hard to justify the mar the marginal extra damage of an executioner weapon especially when you consider that you're also not just giving up the attack but you're also giving up the egos the extra ability of the shield in this case poison resistance which is one of the best early game resistances to find all right i think that we've mostly cleared this floor at this point so auto travel and done i don't have a cloak yet so we're searching yep we've never found a cloak and hey guys we got the latest possible lair worst possible luck and this run does not seem to care we're going to ditch the hand axe at this stage because it's pretty clear i will never be going back to a simple hand axe uh we'll test read these um the answer the question here is uh are you going to enchant what you should enchant the thing you're least likely to replace gloves can get replaced with gloves of strength a pair of boots is going to get replaced with boots of flying if i find it or stealth shield kite shield of poison resistance is getting probably not getting replaced until i find a tower shield honestly or have an alternate source of shielding so i would rather take the plus one points to shield in this situation uh oh we forgot to read the last scroll vulnerability pause discussing vulnerability it's a useless scroll right except it makes a polymorph paralysis far more likely to land charming and paralysis in particular what you want to think of if you do v b whatever and hover on an enemy it might tell you you have like a 20 percent chance to paralyze if you're at full screen length pop a vulnerability and then check and suddenly you're like 60 percent and you're like oh well now i can do it so i save my vulnerability scrolls but i don't generally use them i use them when there's an enemy that will be more dangerous to me to go in straight up and i'm sure you guys have seen how fast i dispatch my enemies so that doesn't happen very often uh nessos comes to mind readily the blinking rapid moving uh fire poisoning centaur he is semi vulnerable ish to wands so definitely somebody you'd be happy to hit him with that rule of thumb with trog do not buy your weapons you will find them exceptions artifact weapons are freaking awesome so if there's a good artifact take it <clears throat> uh we can stand our ground here uh oh yes absolutely correct uh i'm generally someone who avoids harm because harm increases the damage against me and it's not i'm not likely to die because i didn't kill something fast enough i'm more likely to die because i took damage faster than i realized personally um you could very well make the argument harm is better in this game than not because i'm so far out damaging my enemies that and i have so much defensiveness that i will still win fights faster and better and end threats for example take a hydra you hit a hydra for a ton of damage it hit back for a moderate amount of damage you kill it that was just a better fight with harm but uh yeah, as a teaching run, I would say do not do that to yourself. Generally speaking, beginners are not going to die from doing damage too slow. They're going to die from taking damage too fast. I feel very far away from my upstairs here, so I'm going to retreat all the way back. But just one more. Just one more. What do you buy here? Okay, pop quiz. Pause the video if you like. You have the screen in front of you. You have the money here. Uh, we have not yet gone to orc so we don't know what shops will show up there these are all the shops in the game so far including this one and this one what do you buy here i'll answer in five five four three two one okay honest answer one two three for sure any more than that it's up to you and honestly there's nothing wrong with doing that either and just buying all of those because money is less important than having the gear you need to win 
and fog will save your life when you don't expect it to. But we already have a fog, and we're not going to have two fogs. Do we really need to buy a third and a fourth? No, not really. But if you're lazy like me and you're going to forget to come back, you may as well just buy it now. Though the sleeper hit here that you might not realize is good is Butterflies. Butterflies does more than just fill the screen with high, dodgy enemies that can block shots for you. Butterflies forcibly pushes the enemies that are near you away from you to make space for Butterflies. So it buys you an air gap against a deadly enemy. If you're up against, I don't know, uh, a death yak pack, and there are two death yaks in melee with you, and you pop butterflies, you just bought yourself three spaces. Then they're going to beat up the butterflies to try to reach you. That's two turns of running away. Butterflies, in some situations, is a better blink. So 100% we're buying that. Enchant armor, there's no need not to take the plus one. Fog is correct. My answer is ABC. But... I would also take that because I have no reason not to. Uh, what do we not have identified? I'm just playing the, the the ID game by just test IDing everything at this stage, which means I would give up a blink scroll. So really, I shouldn't be doing that anymore. I do want to know which is my brand, which is my blink. Yeah, so ID scrolls here, fused on scrolls are very valuable. So we'll save those. All right. Oh, we haven't found the lair yet. Back to the door. I guess the big lesson I want to take away from there is A, that butterflies is good, but B, money is not worth hoarding. It's f fine to hoard when you're trying to make a specific build work or if you're saving up for an item that you know exists, but if you're just prospectively saving it, don't. When do you go sub-dungeon? What, what do you mean by sub-dungeon specifically? Are you talking lair or are you talking like time portals that exist? Uh, I consider Lair to be safer than D10. So if I'm playing correctly, uh, I would do... Uh, let me write this down in chat, actually, because it'll be something I want to stick later. So I would say my rough gameplay order is Dungeon until Lair, then Lair in full, but asterisk, but have your answers first and we'll talk about what that means then i come out of that and either dungeon to 15 or orc one orc two as well if you're confident generally speaking this order works very well for me dungeon to lair then finish lair dungeon to 15 orc one and two So after D10 and 11, then layer to 4 or 5, then Orc, then D15. Yep, that's very reasonable. The thing to bear in mind, honestly, more than anything else, is be ready to back out. Because if you walk into a D12-4 that should be fine, and you are dealing with stuff that you can't deal with, then take the easiest source of EXP, whatever it may be. Always take the easiest source of EXP, no matter what it is. Uh, two-headed ogres. At this stage of the game, a two-headed ogre now is exactly as dangerous as a one-headed used to be. So same basic idea. Poison the heck out of it. Run. Freezerk. Kill. Um... Is there a similar way of tanking, checking for magic users? I don't actually have a good answer to that. It does say how much damage each spell is likely to do to you, but I don't actually know uh, how precise that is because sometimes you have vulnerabilities to things. And I will say that my instinct tends to guide me more than anything else. And my instinct, as you've seen, tends to be minimize all risk. And that tends to work really well for me. Uh... Acrobat versus Guardian Spirit. Uh, this is an advanced tactic, and I'm not going to teach it in this video. I'm going to tell you that as a melee minotaur berserker, the amulets you're looking for in no particular order are Acrobat, Guardian, and Regeneration, and Shield. So, plus five shields is very nice. Uh, Acrobat so that you can run away and gain 15 to, to evade while running. Remember, you also attack while evading, because revenge attacks. 
uh, or Guardian Spirit to convert your 10 useless MP into 10 more HP. I would tend to value this the least because you have such a massive HP pool that it kind of feels a little extra. One dodged attack is worth more than 10 HP typically. Okay, uh, I'm just going to be lazy now and auto explore. But with my lazy comes correcting it the moment it stops. Look at this is the perfect kill hole. They're all going to come down this hallway, attack one at a time with no visibility. Greenborn is saying something really valuable in chat, and it's kind of expounding on my point from before. More important than the correct next floor, according to the guide, is be willing to dodge and dive around things that are dangerous. If you see Menas and you're a mage, do not clear that floor. Just, you know, unless you're absolutely confident in your ability to, like, pick off a little loot here, a little loot there while hugging the staircase, Menos will silence you, haste you, and beat the crap out of you. Why should you put yourself in that situation? If you see Mara, recognize that it might be a good time to go and do easier floors first. Always take the easiest DXP on the table. Unless you know you're playing for turn count and speed. But if you're doing that, then why are you why are you watching a video called a tutorial? Uh, all right, come at me, bros. See how there's an orc here? I would avoid it. Because there's nothing to stop there from being orc sorcerers that can summon high-level demons, double and triple uh, smiters, and a confusion early on. I would rather be more empowered by the time I come here. And I don't need the loot. I'd like the loot, but I don't need it. Again, same basic tactics. Make them come at you one at a time. Retreat into the known. Orc early can be done sometimes, even often, and so it will lull you into a false sense of security thing. You can do it every time. Also, the end branches of Orc, uh, the Orc 2, and it's deep inside vaults can be extremely dangerous. Ooh. The game here is tempting me with a thing I love, which is loot. I should not buy the Bloodstained Hand Axe, probably, because what's the point? I already have better, and I'm going to get better. Hey, welcome to the channel. Or the channel, the stream. Ragoon, pleasure seeing you. Um, it's just it's just a, a, a descriptor. It's basically just a random artifact. Um, but I'll come back to that when we're done with this floor. Let's just quickly auto-explore everything else. Uh, shadows, whatever. Just come to a hallway where he has to come at me in a line and beat him to death. Okay, so we have now cleared all the way to the lair entrance, so we are ready to take on the lair, which was where this video could theoretically end, so I'm very happy we got far enough. We're going to go over two things in order. First, I mean, I did get a 55-minute win with Otabis, so it's hard to argue your point, but it took me 83 deaths. Okay, so why on earth would I consider dropping from the wand axe that I'm already good at with Trog, the god who gives you gifts of weapons, to picking up a hand axe, right? In the lair, you are going to encounter multiple threats. Every character entering the lair needs to be able to answer the following questions. One, Mamba. Two, Death Yak Pack. Three, Hydra. Four, uh... I think those are the big ones, honestly. Cane Toad doesn't strike me as a question. Electric Eel, maybe? But you can always walk around them. So really, I would say these questions... Oh, I can't post in here because I didn't log in. More than anything else, these are the questions you need to be able to answer. And the answer might not be the answer you think it is. You might be thinking my answer is, oh, you have to be this weapon or that weapon. No, 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 no. Tactics are all you need for a lot of these. How will I beat Death Yaks? Well, this character is strong enough to kill a Death Yak 1v1. So as long as I can get it into a 1v1 situation, I'm good. If I'm surrounded by a pack, in the case of an emergency, I'll fear, butterflies, or haste. That's one, two, three, four, five, six resets. Good enough. I have an answer. How am I going to deal with hydras? Well, you might think, oh, I need to go and fish for a fire axe or something because that cuts off their heads. That would be a very reasonable option. But I can also just paralyze it. I've got three paralysis. And to be perfectly honest, I can just berserk and kill a hydra 1v1. 
I literally can just bludgeon it to death over and over and over with my war axe until it dies, and I will be just fine. Uh, I'll show you guys that, because that's my preferred tactic, to be perfectly honest. Um... Lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, my my answer to Hydra. My answer to Hydra is I have 16 AC. Most characters don't have that. What's my answer to the Mamba? In my uh, uh, I happen to have resist poison. So my answer to Mambas is I resist poison. Your argument is nullified. In a pinch, I will turn on Trog's hand. But the other answer could be I will just be careful with my tactics and berserk. So you'll notice that my answer really comes down to tactics and berserk, tactics and berserk, tactics and berserk. Trog is a cheat. I love it. In a mage, these answers are sometimes much harder. As a mage, you often don't have a good answer to a hydra. You're still using magic dart and uh, uh, that one exploding prism, I forget what it's named, Fulminant Prism. And those are answers, but they're not good answers. And you find yourself ant counting your consumables and deciding, maybe I should do one more floor of dungeon and see if I can get some better loot first. Anyway, those are the questions. Now, on to the next thing. Should I buy this hand axe? And the correct answer, as you all figured it is, no, not renounce Trog. <laughs> Berserk and stay with Trog. Your ans my, my answer is... Uh, Trog's hand. Trog's hand. Not Trog's abandoned. So, should I buy this axe? The answer is, of course, absolutely not. If it's a plus seven hand axe of flaming, I'll still stop using it in almost no time as my skill vastly outstrips it, and I get a better war axe. Um, the money is better used on something else. It, the only thing I'm hoping for is it would be nice to have blink. It would be nice to have resistances to cold or something or electricity but honestly the odds of that is low enough my money is more valuable to me i'm skipping it in we go into the lair nah we don't need flame we're just gonna beat the hydra to death with an axe it's gonna be great okay more important than ever when you enter a branch is to hug your only staircase try not to get locked out of it be more bold with taking fights that you need to take but yeah are we are we back on everything? Yeah, okay, we're back on everything. That's the bottom line, laddie. Hand axe is so weak. This is a 24 damage uh, axe, right? This would drop my... This is a 15 damage rating. That's how far I would sink if I switched over to this weapon. And this is completely unenchanted. Also, you could make the argument, if I wasn't a troglodyte, do not use any choppable weapon to kill a hydra. So that's kind of my point. I routinely use axes to kill hydras, but I do it knowing my risk, and I'll explain when I get there. This is a very, very critical situation. I want to make sure it's a 1v1 at all times, because either of these enemies can, get, can high roll, but neither of them did. If you try to kill a Hydra with a chopping weapon, you have to do it right off the bat. You can't get you can't get unlucky. You can't disengage and then try again later because then they'll have 13 heads. Right. Uh I mean if you do have a flaming weapon, that is the correct solution. You should just use that instead. And actually now that I'm at it. We do have a halberd of flaming, and we probably do cross drain it relatively well. Is it a two hander? Ah, uh, it's a two hander. Never mind. Yeah, never mind. Uh, Limo, I would say not really on a Minotaur Berserker. Minotaur Berserker, I'll see the enemy decide what I need to beat him with and use it. Especially anti magic versus my general brand. Uh, yes, Ray, that's correct. You need a cutting fire weapon to sever a head and cauterize it. Um, but we deal enough damage to absolutely destroy a Hydra in melee, no problem, if it's a four or five head, and if we can control the fight. Exactly, rage and kill. But we do not do enough to do take them two and three v one where we're distracted and confused, so we need to make absolutely sure we control the fight before we commit to it. 
In other words, my oh, Ketoblepas, tactic with Ketoblepas, always take a step out of the cloud. That is all. Attack, 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 oh, cloud, step away. Attack, 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 oh, he's dead. Actually, uh, Greenborn makes an excellent point. That is a good situation to use your Curaris and your Poison Darts in. Uh, there, you have plenty of room to attack before you engage, and if he's poisoned, he's not going to be much of a threat to you, is he? Um, but just not standing inside the Calcify Cloud is easy. Let them come to me. I don't know how many there are, so I'm going to turn on Regeneration early here, because I might be in this fight for a very long time. Hey, it wasn't that long after all. Yeah, I would agree, Limo. I would say Venom is useful in this stage of the game through Orc, and then it drops off hard. Most enemies resist it. It's not very potent. Flame stays good for almost the entirety of a 3 rune run. It starts to really drop off in late depth and Zot, in my opinion. Uh, the best ones are uh, the one that gives you a clone of your weapon. Uh, I don't remember what it's called. The one that gives you a clone of your weapon, and um, the... not draining. I don't love draining. It's resisted frequently. At Ray, that's exactly right, and that's what we do. As a, as a Minotaur Berserker, it's the equivalent of haste with a damaged steroids, so we can actually pull that off. Uh, what's the question here? Do perhaps I cast Rage too often? I wish I could highlight this comment. Yes. Yes, you do. I don't even know, but I know you do. Never use Rage if you do not have a strong sense of how long the battle will last and how it will end. Yes, Spectral, that's the brand. Uh, when you cast Rage, you are committing to a fight. If you can see the enemies and you know what's coming, commit and win. But if you commit at random, you are at the mercy of what comes next. Okay, if I berserk this guy right now and kill him, no problem. But then I will be slowed, unable to berserk, poisoned from the one hit. And No, no, you're doing great. You're doing great. Uh, slowed, unable to berserk, poisoned, and in comes the fire dragon or the Catoblopus. And now I can't dodge around him so easily because Calcify Cloud against me slow. I don't know what's here, so I'm not going to berserk here. I'm going to walk away. Now I'm comfortable. Now I can Berserk, kill him, and easily run over here and hide. And if I did not resist Poison, that would be the right move, because you want to Berserk early. Before he hits you twice, you don't have enough HP to survive the Poison. But I resist Poison, so I can just beat him up the old-fashioned way. That's less than ideal. I would say... I mean, it's it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That, that's fine. Uh... I would say I try not to Berserk when something less than Berserk will do. But I do use Berserk quite liberally when it will do. Okay, this is perfect. A uh, trick that you need to be aware of is that you can drop a Scroll of Poison here. It's all right, man. Uh, live and learn. Uh, you can drop a Scroll of Poison here, and all these elephants will have to walk through Poison to reach you, or just stand by and let you disengage. I'm not going to because I win this fight handily without it, but I am going to keep backing off until they force me to engage or till I get to a beautiful hallway. This is a beautiful hallway. Now we engage. Even if they trample me back two or three times, I still get the 1v1s. And with good tactics, I didn't have to berserk. With bad tactics, I would have walked in, engaged them here, 4v1, and then had to berserk out of it. And Minotaur is so forgiving that that would have worked. And if it didn't work, then I could use Butterflies. But, yeah. Even then, even then, it's just two enemies at once instead of any number of enemies. All right, I think we have this floor. We're just going to auto-travel finish it now. We've basically got this done. Uh, hmm. That's a good question. Uh, I would ask smarter people in chat to answer than me. You can't potion. You can't scroll. I think you can still reach... You can't fire ranged weapons. All right, we're done here. Uh, next floor. 
Oppressive heat. Gentlemen, I have to admit a weakness. Whenever I see a timed vault, I spend all of my energy trying to get to that timed vault immediately. I take massive risks well beyond what I should, and I often die either in the vault or on the way to it or on the way back. And this run will be no exception. So instead of my good tactic of luring him back upstairs, we're just going to quickly kill him here so that we can continue to explore. Instead of carefully triple dipping, we're going to rapidly and ridiculously explore in any direction just to see the maximum number of tiles. Very distant. Okay, if it's very distant, then we're barking up the wrong tree. Let's get out of here and go bark up a different tree. Oh, we found it. Well, now we can afford to be careful. Unfortunately, we are at a hydra. This is not good. Here's why the situation is awkward. If I pull these guys upstairs, this hydra will be waiting by the stairs to beat the crap out of me. If I stand my ground here and try to multi-fight the hydra, this guy will paralyze me from behind. I think what I do, honestly, is mm, accept that I'm not going to get the portal. And then try to get the portal. These two stairs are no. This stair is a yes. Now we're going to try to get it again. But when I said except I'm not going to get the portal, I want you to understand what I mean philosophically. Do not hold yourself to the standard of getting in. Still be safe. Back off from fights. Don't take unnecessary risks. That whole portal is just going to give me one piece of fire resistance equipment at best anyway. Probably. Right? I might get a, a broad axe of flaming, but I might get nothing out of it. It's just a little EXP. So don't lose your life getting into it. For Christ's sake, I might get so overwhelmed inside there that I just have to back out anyway. But here I'm going to leverage the fact that I defend against yaks very well and just kill them all. Ooh, glowing cloak. And my first cloak. And it's a very good cloak. All right, we made it, guys. We didn't have to make it, but we made it. We're very happy to make it. Uh, there are no cold enemies inside of a volcano, so we're absolutely comfortable doubling up on fire resistance. Uh, we have a potion of resistance if things get hairy. One pip is plenty, two pip, sorry, one pip is good, two pips is plenty. Right, uh, there are certain vaults that are more likely to give you certain things. Volcanoes I don't think would give you acquirement typically, but Bailey would. Shmark, while you're moving upside down side, the timer of temporary vault is running. I think so, that's correct. You're both correct, actually. I should have done that. I should have specifically taken the time to point that out. I've been playing enough speedruns lately that I'm not paying attention to things like that, but I should be. I do not need this plus three scimitar of flaming, but I'm taking it with me just in case. Uh, let's make sure that this is, in fact, an empty... Once you're in, you're in. It doesn't expire once you're here. Intentionally walking into the flames to prove a point. Double resist, that's three damage. Staying in the fire, three damage. Three damage. It's really not that big a deal to get hit a couple times. And one or two pips of fire resistance is a lot. But tactics are always correct. I'm not charging in boldly. I'm making them come to me one at a time. Not berserking unless I have to. Uh, I would ideally like to get him to my blind kill hole again. Thank you. Tactics, tactics, tactics. Uh, Ice Blast would be really nice here. Potion of Flying would be nice too. I have two Flyings, so I could do it. I don't know if it's worth it, honestly. I might just go the other direction instead. Yeah, I'm just going to go the other direction. Well, I'd rather not actually step into fire on purpose. 
LA snake at lava's end. Close the door, open the door, close the door, open the door. I'm very big on letting the fights come to me. Okay, we made it. We'll take the Battle Axe of Flaming. It's unfortunately a two-hander, and we're on one-handers with shield. So we're not really going to be able to use it in a pinch. Uh, but we did full clear, and that's what counts. And we will take the scale mail, I think. It's a three drop to our AC in exchange for resist fire. I don't think that's worth it. I think the AC is more valuable, but I will buff our AC further. Okay, and out we go. Lignification, cool, cool, cool. Nothing like becoming a berserk tree. I can envision circumstances in which I might care for this battle axe, but honestly, we're so close to our trawl gifts kicking in. Any minute now, the weapon is not going to be the question. Let's head back towards where that hydra and that stair was. I want to, I want to clear a beachhead around these stairs so that there's a safe retreat again. Hey, we were afraid of you. Pro tip: When petrifying, if you are worried about being attacked while petrifying. Cast Brother in Arms. There's nothing quite like having a Berserk Troll as your bodyguard. I'm not worried about it, which is why I'm not going to. But if you're you know, in a situation where that's a concern, make sure that there's something else to shoot at. This is a good example of that. Uh, who asked me about retreating? This is a good example. These guys will keep up no matter what I do. They're going to catch me about here. I'm going to come here to limit how many can fight me at once and then beat them up. Technically, that is advancing towards them. That's fine. It's... it's way better than ending up in an unwinnable fight in the middle of nowhere. And I'm acting like every threat is the end of the game, but the truth is most of these threats are so mild that I could just do this and just hold tab and be fine. Oh, except that one. All right, well, you guys get to see what happens when we do stupid things. Uh, we just... Tab held our way into a four-headed Hydra and made it an eight-headed Hydra. But we have full HP, so Berserk. And watch how fast it dies. Nine heads, ten heads in healing, eleven heads in healing, twelve heads in healing, thirteen heads in healing. Seventeen head win. But damn, that was a little scary. Generally speaking, I stop berserk. I, I stop face tank berserking hydras when they are stopping four headed and five headed. So the fact that this was eight headed and I was already taking damage was unusual for me. But yeah, and the worst case scenario here was not that I die. The worst case scenario was the berserk uh, ended, and I forced to use fear or butterflies to buy myself space. But tapping into that Hydra was, was kind of awful. Not going to lie. And it's, I, I love that it happened right when I said, Oh, look at me. I'm just going to tab. Kind of like, Oh, this is Dungeon Crawl. We punish hubris here. That's kind of our job. All right. Uh, good tactics always, please. Pull you guys back to this angle and then beat the crap out of all of you. New potions. Heal wounds. We haven't found heal wounds this entire game. That's bad luck. Uh, we're pretty close to the end of my uh, time for today. Oh, let's pull these guys upstairs. This is a bad swarm. But we'll end on a high note. We're just picking up a plus six battle axe of flaming. Game seems to be asking me, are you sure you still want that shield? Die, die, die. Oh, damn. On the one hand, I was hoping it would be bad, so I could say, see, you don't need good artifacts to win the game. I beat it with nothing. But the game just gave me one of the harder resistance. And an acquirement scroll? 
Game, you shouldn't have. Why are you so kind to me? Uh, what shield is this? I mean, wow. Just, wow. Yeah, okay. So, in the span of five seconds, we went from using basic stuff to, uh, we no longer need to carry a basic plate armor with us because we're on friggin' resist electric plate mail, baby, with regen built in and will. <laughs> oh, and don't worry about that kite shield because the moment you're ready to not care about poison, we are ready. Oh, we are ready to put you in. Uh, what happened? What I do wrong? In RF strength plus three, slate plus three. The only downside in this position is that I don't have a source of resist poison otherwise, and most of where I'm going to go next requires resist poison. Well, benefits from it anyway. Uh, 25, 9, 18 versus 25, 9, 14. And the slay bonus. I'm honestly tempted to stay in this poison resist a little longer, but yeah, that's a... There's no lesson to teach here, guys. That's just good luck. Sometimes that happens, too. We've been dealing with bad loot luck the entire game. We didn't find a heal wounds potion until just now, right? Our first cloak fa was found outside a volcano in the lair, and it doesn't matter. Sometimes, if you with good tactics, you can win with a, a raw axe. With bad tactics, you can lose with the best gear in the game. Thing to, to note, 17% to paralyze an 8-headed Hydra, right? <laughs> Practice your luck. But with vulnerability, 39% to polymorph. Whoops, wrong one. 39% to paralyze. And with paralysis, very easy to kill him. Man, let me tell you something about winning with a feeling, all right? When I made the kitty cat account, uh, I don't want to do LG. What do I want to do? Uh, Kitty Cat won five times in 103 games, and these were suicidal tactics. Uh, let's see. Whoa, that's deep. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, you want to see my my cred? I'll give you my cred. 917 games played, 87 wins at a roughly 10% win rate. Uh, my best streak is 14 wins in a row with no fire elementalist. D, uh, but all of those, just different things, different things, different things. Uh, oh, apparently I'm on a streak right now. If I keep me being, that'll be great. Also, I'm also I am also. I'm also Bounty Knoll, where I have another 7-win streak, I think it was, out of 10, so 70% with Knolls. I'm also uh, Octopus. Um, there is, but let's see. I don't. How do I get there? I guess if I dump this character, does that get me there? No, that just dumps the character. Oh, that's how we do it. Save out scores. My score page, because you asked. Um, back when I was first playing in 2012 on the old versions, my first wins were online were melee uh, berserkers, then some dragon wizards, and then other stuffs. It's a long page of wins, honestly. Scroll through. Uh, best streak. This was around the time in version 0 0.26, I think, where I was going for a win with all races, uh, also known as great player. And I had several one-in-ones, like a Mummy Summoner, Tengu Wizard. Uh, my fastest win ever was a Palantonga Berserker at that time. It's like hour 30 minutes or something like that. And yeah, I friggin' love Gnolls, man. They are the best. Uh, teach you to play so many different things. Apparently, I'm currently running a high score on one of the Gnoll categories. Uh, the Gnoll Alchemist, which is cool i guess it's a 15 runer that i made recently uh in alpha 
yeah, mummies aren't fun. I'm not going to pretend I like them, but Death Pillar in a 0 0.11 is a fun build. I'll show you guys sometime. Uh, anyway, enough of this. Back to the actual thing that we're here for. Actually, crap, my time's up. I should really just call it here before I'm tempted to play quickly and then die. Uh, let's, yeah, okay, so, again, tactics. See, I, I did not charge straight in. I waited around a corner for them to come to me so that it's always just a limited number of combatants at a time. To my stat page? Yeah, sure. Uh, how do I do that? I guess we go save, scores, boop. But I would also point you in the direction of some of my alts. This is, uh, that does not work that way, huh? Maybe the capitalization matters, or maybe it's just down for the count for now. Yeah, kitty cat. This is my kitty cat profile, where I'm playing pure felids and felid berserkers. Uh, and got my faster win of one hour and six minutes by playing suicidally fast. If you're on my YouTube channel, you can look at the live stream of the hour eight minute win. Or was that 19? One of these two was streamed. This one was not. And then there is Winator. Hilariously misnamed because he was not a winner. But 55 minutes sub one hour win. Very recent. Very proud of that run. Very proud of that run. I haven't pulled off anything like that before. Um, And I have my alt account that I use when I'm being risky and trying new strats and seeing what works and what doesn't and learning new races. Uh, bounty alt, which apparently also is an 11% win rate. It's hilarious. When I'm being overly risky and trying things I don't know how to do, my win rate goes up, I guess. Dumb. Octopus Air Elementalist, aka Shocktopus, is a very fun build also. But yeah, if you're if you're new to my YouTube, uh, please look at the vast quantity of live and recorded stuffs that I have on here, because I've been playing this game for over a decade, and I've accumulated a lot of content in that time, even with all my breaks. Um, better players than me will tell you all the ways in which I play subpar, and there are many. I can't help it. I play how I play. Uh, Seven-headed Hydra, we should be able to just kill him. I have 200 hands to achieve 100 plus wins to beat you. In terms of... Oh, d d dude, that's easy. Just ignore all the losses, and then you're tied. Berserk and kill. Berserk and kill. Nice and easy. Because we have that whole fight under control and we can be confident in our survival. Is there any armor that we've left behind that we should be looking at? No, there is not. Layer 4! Uh, this is a bad opener, so we're just going to stand on the stairs and pull things with us. We don't resist cold yet, so I'm a little cautious about being hit with cold attacks. It's not a big deal, I'm just a little cautious is all. Ooh, call the yaks, please. I really do want to kill death yaks. That would be perfect for me. All three of you, please, upstairs, so that your buddies don't come. Berserk, so that we win for sure. Focus on one, focus on the weakest one, focus on the weakest one. Of course, man. Thanks for sharing. Uh, oh, Urug. Another monster that I'm not very afraid of and will die just to plain Berserk. If we have time to think about it, we might also use Curari against him. But he's holding something that we very much want right now. A broad axe. This is our game-ending weapon. Uh, obviously, we want to get it branded and upgraded, and we're going to get a better version by the time the game's over. But this bad boy when we are able to get it you know to optimal speed is a high damage rating one hander uh hmm i'm actually nervous about being at 1.2 speed with it even with how big a leap it is in damage i don't want enemies taking double turns every time i attack so i'll probably just stay on war axe for now but we got it and that's what counts kill them all kill them all kill them all i'm just holding down tab again yeah, do you know, this is the part of the video where I say this is not good tactics. This is just me being impatient. So, oh, pause. 
Cap. Oh. Pause. Tap. 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 Oh. Pause. Tap. 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 Just tab all you guys. You guys cannot possibly stop me. The moment I lose some health, I'll go ahead and regenerate. Eh, regenerate. We might need a berserk here. There's just too many of them. The bad tactics are putting me into a potentially dangerous situation. With good tactics, that would have taken four times longer. But, you know, I also could potentially have died there, so it's a good thing that uh, I labeled that as do not do what I'm doing right now. Pull you back to here. Boom. Take you guys all on in the corner. Boom. Boom. All right. Floor cleared. Uh, Layer 5 deserves your respect. Layer 5 has, as a rule of thumb, extra enemies, extra damage availability, stuff that can threaten you legitimately. In my ideal world, I get through this without losing my blink. I have a blink scroll, right? I thought I did. I don't. Oh, well. In an ideal world, I get through this without using any escape consumables. Reality will take the course it takes. Who remembers what we do for electric eels from last video? Anybody? Even though we resist electricity now, so it's a little less relevant. Wand of Flaming. Burn them and cook them. Oh, God. Pretty much never. Maybe an ice imp in a very specific situation. You guys come at me. I'm not coming to you. About to maximize screen. All right, layer five will be the last floor we do today. Oh, well, last floor we do for this recording. So, yeah. And I'm getting sloppy with my, my manual explorer because I'm just too far above the power curve to be concerned. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize you called it Wand of Lame. That's actually a little clever. Yeah. Uh, you end the game with so many flame charges that knowing it's an almost certain kill against an eel makes makes it a lot of value. And, it, and, and it's, uh, it's like a fog, right? Because the steam that rises blocks their line of sight to electrocute you with. God, we are very far away from the stairs. Hug the edge of the map just to minimize getting surrounded. Notice how that, that death yak of freezing was able to deal with that much damage. That's what I mean by I'm being cautious about cold damage right now. That's an excellent question. They probably are. Oh, never mind. Not enough Not enough to, to justify worrying about it. I hit him with a puff of flame and he didn't instantly melt. Sorry, are you asking about eels? Uh, they're not specifically vulnerable to flame, but they're fought in water. When you attack in water, it raises the steam, and they take damage from the flame and the steam. And even if you miss, the steam will still hit. And they're staying in that steam, so they keep getting hurt. I wouldn't say that specifically... I mean, Nagas are hard. They're they're slow. Slow is hard. Uh, they have extra HP, which is fun. I would prefer to play a Barakim in most situations than I would play a Naga. Honestly, any race that takes away my ability to enjoy my loot generally is a race I'll like a little less. Unless I'm doing a specific thing like I was with the Felid. Exactly. And and the, if you're aiming your your flame right, it it can't shoot back, so it has to take a step towards you or move around, which means you get another attack in. And if it tries to walk into the smoke, then yeah. Naga Venom made one of the best and really powerful comms of all time. Eh, sure. I mean, you can make that claim about a lot of things, right? Minotaur Berserker is powerful. Null Ice Elementalist, I would argue, is extremely powerful. Um, honestly, this game, not counting playing challenge classes and weak races, you generally have so much more power than you need as long as you are doing what I'm doing right now, which is 
treating every fight like it's your last and avoiding dangerous situations. If you are risk avoidant, you will last a very long time with just about any build. Hey, wait, is that fully explored? That didn't look fully explored to me. Uh, generic war acts of uselessness. Are you able to ensorcel me? You are. So I'm going to go ahead and do this to knock that 24% chance of being agonied down to zero. Remember, it's not just health regen, it's also the will. Do not get pincered by elephants in this area. Back off, let them come to you. Putting the hand back on because I know I'm going to need it. You all dead now? Very good. Next side. Dire elephants are what scare me here, so I'm just being a little, little turn by turny until I see them. Spectral dire elephants scare me a lot less for no good reason. You guys are, oh, good lord. You and the ice bears all the time. Where's my Gazog so that you guys don't have bodies left when I kill you? We do not want to let them out of this one tile wide hallway, so we're going to push back really hard here. Lock in the fight. I thought Minotaur Berserker was the uh, was the king of the leaderboards for speed. Okay, we made a big mistake. Remember my whole thing of never entering a Berserk in a fight you're not going to finish? I thought that this area was disconnected. So now that extra dire elephant is too much for me. So I need to be ready to escape. I'm going to let my Berserk expire with one enemy facing me, not two, and have a teleport active to get out of dodge. We hit the target for axes, but I suspect we need to raise it a little higher since we're doing a thing. Let's switch over to Broad Axe. 1.1 cannot be improved with additional weapon skill. Nope, we're not. So we're just going to go all in on shields to try and make the penalty a little more mitigated and stick with our War Axe a little bit longer. Am I being silly about this? The delay with the War Axe is 0 0.7 for 25 damage. The delay with the Broad Axe is... 0 0.7. Yeah, somehow I just read it wrong. We are absolutely switching to Broad Axe, guys. Right, time for our damage spike. Keep that door closed so nobody lets the elephants out. Hey, we got flying boots! I'm so glad I didn't put that enchant into this god knows how long ago. Uh, boots of flying... So we're 0 0.7 with this shield. With the better shield, we are 0 0.8, which absolutely is good enough to upgrade our shield with. We do not resist poison, but we do have a potion of resistance in case we need it in a pinch. So I think it's time for us to just accept that we're going to be on the better shield at this point. Next up will be Orc. Uh, hopefully we will turn more of our auxiliary gear into good gear. Limo, you're absolutely correct. Uh, we discussed this a bit in the first video, but the TLDR of it is if you are attacking an enemy, your rage extends. If you kill an enemy, sorry, it stays the same. If you're killing an enemy, it gets longer. If you walk even one step, it plummets down. So you really want to try to berserk in a position where you can continuously attack and kill and hold your ground instead of berserk in a position where you're trying to then walk away to the stairs or reach the next guy. Which is why Rampage is so much fun on a Berserker, if you can find it. Yeah, next up will be the uh, Orcish Mines, because poison is not particularly common there, so we can definitely leverage our shield. We're hoping for a ring of protection from poison, so that we can wear this shield full time. But we're open to finding a branding scroll for the Broad Axe, or get another Trog Gift, or replace the pair of gloves. Lots of things. After that's done... um. This is too many videos away, but I will explain my risk-threat-benefit assessment for Shoal Snake 
spy editor and uh, we'll uh, decide we'll walk you through why you pick one over the other. Ah, will plus plus is plenty. We can cure out of confusion if it happens and just avoid situations where it's a risk. Totally fine. Um, we do have a ring of will if push comes to shove. Oh, check. That is an easy question. Seven league boots are awesome. Period. Just freaking amazingly awesome. I don't know why they're not a mandatory include on every run. If it was up to me, seven league boots would spawn right next to the orb of Zot, and every game it would be like, now you can have the boots. Why not go further? Have any of you have ever used uh, uh, seven league boots in a ziggurat? If you sorry, if you haven't done that, you haven't lived yet. Polar Vortex, seven, 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 seven. Now you have tornadoes freaking everywhere. It's just so much fun. But yeah, you gotta you got to get the combo going for it to matter, of course. All right, well, thank you all so much for coming. This was a, a really fun stream to do. You all had a lot of really good questions. I hope they'll be useful when, uh, when and if I get around to posting this video again. Uh, that's a good point, Ragoon. But there really aren't a lot of enemies that can abyss you in uh, the Orcish Vines. And the trick to that is whenever you see one, instantly pop will plus plus from uh trog's hand and then you're protected because you have on demand will plus plus health regen as long as you uh, remember to use it uh distortion on the other hand well that'll get you killed all right that's it for tonight thanks so much for watching i will try and be back later with a little more and i'll see you guys next time